when you're doing your registrar's license, it's more about can you catch, are you finding the DQs? Um, can you spot the ones that deviate from the standard more than not? Um, in addition to handling, honestly, I would be most worried about your handling, um, just being gentle and respectful that these are other people's animals that they have worked very hard for, um, some people for even decades. Becoming an ARBA registrar is a difficult task. You have to understand what the process is, uh, as well as it also takes a lot of time studying and learning the standard. Um, here to help us with the class today for becoming an ARBA registrar is Natalie Norris. She has been raising rabbits since 2010 and became a registrar in uh, 2018. Um, she's uh, very accomplished as, a, uh, as an exhibitor in her youth years and now is, as she's uh, as, as begun in open. I'm very excited to have Natalie today uh, presenting and I'll let you go ahead and kick off Natalie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so as David said, becoming a registrar is not necessarily as easy as you may think. There are some guidelines um, that have to be followed in order to do it. I've got my license pretty recently, so it's still pretty fresh. So there's some basic eligibility requirements that has to do with your experience and the amount of time you've actually been an ARBA member. Um, keep in mind, there's no age requirements. As long as you can pass all the qualifications, a youth member can be a registrar. I got my registrar's license while I was still showing in youth. So for experience, you have to at least have three consecutive years of practically raising rabbits or cavies, depending on which registrar's license you go for. The process is the same for rabbits or cavies. Um, so that's three years of not necessarily owning rabbits, but breeding them consistently. Um, and then having that practical knowledge as a breeder, not necessarily just an owner. And then we have our membership requirement. Again, it's three consecutive years you must be an ARBA member. I have friends that their eligibility to be a registrar was pushed back because they let a year lapse somewhere along the way, but it has to be three consecutive, so three years right in a row. It can be more, but three is the minimum. And then from there, if you decide this is something you want to do, you have to request a registrar's application from the ARBA office. Emailing info at ARBA.net will get you that application. Um, but keep in mind, this process is time sensitive. Um, so you can get the application and hold on to it. But once you submit it, your clock starts, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So from there, you need endorsement. You have to have 20 written endorsements from open ARBA members. So that's simply them putting their signature down and their ARBA number saying, yes, I do believe this individual will be a good registrar and I am willing to back them up. Keep in mind 20 is the minimum, but it's never a bad idea to have over 20. Um, I know people who've collected 21, 22, just in case someone's membership lapsed and they didn't realize it, but that way you're still set on the 20 minimum. Then you return the application. Uh, and the, there is an application fee of $25. Keep in mind, once the application is submitted, you, the two-year clock starts. So that means you have two years to pass your oral and written exam and do three assist with judges and one assist with a registrar. So the examinations themselves, uh, there's kind of three of them. You have the written exam, which is a written quiz on all 50 breeds, an oral exam, and then you have the assist, which is basically a job shadow with the judges. So uh, the exams, specifically the written and oral exams, they're based on all 50 breeds, and you have to have a score of at least 70% on each. The oral exam does not have as much structure as the written exam. The written exam is produced by ARBA, and it is distributed through ARBA. The oral exam, at least for the registrar's license, there's not really any set criteria. It varies a little bit. I've had friends that have been asked questions. Um, when I took my uh, registrar's oral exam with Pam Jones, uh, she had me tattoo a rabbit, check for disqualifications, and then um, there were some other smaller questions, but not necessarily high pressure. The written exam is where the nitty gritty will be asked. You get about two questions on every breed and then some general um, questions about what you can and can't register in addition to general disqualifications. 
But again, you have to have a passing score of 70 on each of those exams. Then if you pass the exams, you can move on to your assists. So you have to do three assists with judges who have held their license for at least two years. You have to pass two of them. Did you handle the animal safely, respectfully? Um, could, did you catch the cues? Those kinds of things. Generally, is this someone the judge felt like would catch the disqualifications and be able to identify an animal without um, those deviations from the standard. And then you have one assist with the registrar. The registrar assist is a little more low key. I really thought it was very useful as it taught you more of the nitty gritty of how you actually registrar. Um, assisting with judges does a lot for learning DQs and learning about each breed, um, but the registration process itself can be quite intensive. So it's really neat to learn about that firsthand. And then from there, if you do all of those successfully and pass what you need to pass, uh, you officially earn your registrar's license. Um, once you get the word that you passed all of your assist, um, there will be some dues to, pay to, to be paid, and then they'll send you a nice certificate um, explaining that you are now a registrar. So the dues for a registrar's license is $10. Uh, for three years, it's $25. For KVs, it's seven dollars, and three years for uh, seventeen fifty. And then it's really exciting once you get your license, um, but that only op opens the door to more opportunities. So you have get to have the experience registering rabbits, um, making sure they have no DQs and fit to their breed standards. Um, if you are interested in going farther after two years, you are eligible to apply to for your judge's license. If you had registered thirty five rabbits or cavies, but every time you get to register rabbits, it's a really cool opportunity to learn. Most of the time rabbits getting registered are of a high quality as they are going for their grand champions. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to get your hands on different animals and to pick some breeders minds and just continue learning. All of this information came from the ARBA constitution and bylaws specifically under article four um, and in addition to the ARBA site as well. Uh, when you're working towards your registrar's license, um, how, how would you go about studying or like what, what would you say um, would be the best thing to do to um, try to learn about all 50 breeds? Um, writing is a really good one. It's a really hands-on way to see things in person. Um, volunteer to write at shows for different breeds you're not used to is really neat. Plus, uh, everyone's really appreciative for the help. Um, because generally writing can be kind of dull and boring in the job not everyone wants to do. If people's rabbits are on the table, they don't can't really write and show rabbits at the same time very well. In addition to ARBA has a very nice registrar's guide, which is helpful. But if nothing else, just default to the standard of perfection. All the questions come from the standard of perfection. Um, so whatever way you study best. Some people really love their flashcards. Flashcards never really worked for me. Um, but going back to those basic starts and always talking to breeders, most breeders love to talk about their rabbits with you and will like would love to teach you anything that you have questions about as well. So so would you, yeah, so would you say that like going and talking to breeders too, like on, on unique or rare breeds that you're used to seeing, like going and talking to them at shows or going to their barn, like is that something that you find value in or you think that other people would find value in? Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, I'm starting to go for my judge's license and I went to a show. Uh, I brought four rabbits. So the rabbits weren't as big of a deal, but I talked to different breeders about different breeds and keeping in mind that every breeder has a little bit different, something different they're striving for. So in addition to talking to the breeders, I looked it up in the standard. Okay, does these things check out? Because it's really easy to um, read the standard when we get started and then keep reading toward what we want and forget to check back in on the standard. So a combination of that hands on talking to people in person and looking at the standard after having those conversations, I found really beneficial. Very good. Um, uh, as, as a registrar, what do you do while you're registering a rabbit and, wh and what does it mean? So uh, the registration is basically a proof that they fit their breed standards, uh, meaning they have no general disqualifications or breed specific disqualifications. The first thing I always do is I will weigh the animal. I have a lot of friends that breed giant angoras um, and the giant angoras are notorious for not making minimum weight because they are a larger breed. A lot of them struggle to make weight. So the very first thing I do is weigh them. 
That way, if they're overweight or underweight, I don't waste my blank. Each blank is $3, and that has to be paid up front before you register the rabbit for $6. Um, so I will always weigh them first and check for disqualifications before I even start writing on the paper. So the check for disqualifications looks extremely similar to uh, showmanship. Check the eyes, check the ears, flip them over, toenails, anything you would most of the things you look for in showmanship are breed disqualifications or general disqualifications. So if you just follow that routine, if you're familiar with it, um, so checking the eyes, the ears, anything for health illnesses, the teeth definitely, because malocclusion is pretty common. Make sure they have all the t their toes and they're the right color and they're not broken on that, both the front and the back. Check the tail. Um, check the sex of the rabbit to make sure it is what it's supposed to be. In addition to making sure you check the tattoo to make sure the rabbit you're registering is the rabbit you have the pedigree for. Because otherwise that could get very complicated very quickly. They also need a three generational pedigree. That's after I examine the rabbit, before I start doing any paperwork, I also check that. It's very common to be missing weights, missing tattoos, missing colors. Some things you can find, um, some things you can't. If the rabbit was never tattooed, in Angora, sometimes people have fiber animals and they just never tattoo them. Um, you, there's no way that rabbit can be registered because the tattoo is not something you can get. You can always reweigh an animal if you can figure out who has it or if your friend has it or an acquaintance. You can always reweigh it and find the weight. Um, most of the time, colors are just left off because every rabbit has a color, unlike tattoos. Um, and then from there, I will start doing the paperwork. They must present their ARBA card to know that it's present. Um, a little hack that I found years ago, if you aren't registers or if you are and uh, like to register your own rabbit, take a picture of your ARBA card. I have a scan of my ARBA card. That way it's always with me because I have my phone where I might not have the physical copy. Um, or if the physical copy gets forgotten, you still have the proof with you. Um, and then from there, you will fill out the blank and all the forms. Um, an important note is on the variety, uh, they want the specific variety. So if it's a broken silver tip steel black mini lump, you don't just put broken like they show, it'd be a broken silver tip steel black. Um, writing out ruby dyed white instead of doing REW. Some of those things it takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but once you're used to it, it gets a lot easier with time. Great answer, that was really interesting. What are the most common mistakes that you see a person make while wanting to register a rabbit? Um, a lot of them is missing things on the pedigree, which can be really frustrating. Um, the pedigree comes down to most of it. Um, personally, making sure my handwriting is neat uh, for when Arba sends it in. Again, with the pedigrees, a lot of people like to get the template from Arba where you handwrite it in. If it is handwritten, it has to be handwritten on the form. But if you have a digital copy, um, meaning that it printed out, you did not write it by your hand, um, you can send it in, which saves a lot of time because otherwise the whole three generational pedigree needs written on the uh, registration blank. Um, in addition to just making sure you have your Arba card, if the animal doesn't make weight, that's not something the exhibitor can really help. There was one rabbit, I've weighed her three different times to try to register her, and she's never made it. Um, which is a little bit sad when you have these rabbits that are eligible to be a grand champion, they just don't meet the registration uh, criteria. And weight can change to an extent. Um, so there's a few I every so often they're like, oh, are you registering? Can we re-weigh re this one? And we do. And then it still doesn't make it. And they're like, ah, maybe next time. Well, that leads into the next question. And when somebody when somebody comes and wants to register a rabbit with you, um, how, 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 or how would you describe it? Like in, in dogs and in cattle, they have to register that animal at the time that they're born and that it's um, of registered parents and such. Um, how does it work in the rabbit world? So the rabbit world, they have to be at least six months old and meet senior requirements, which means um, I had a friend that had a six, eight uh, giant Angora. I could have registered it if she made senior weight, but she did not see meet senior weight, so she couldn't uh, be registered. A lot of people like to register their rabbits at shows. Another option, because shows are notorious for never having enough blanks, well, you can't find the registrar, unfortunately. Um, if you go on the 
ARBA website under registrars, um, you can locate registrars that are close to you. I have friends that I will go to their barn. One day I did about 20 between three different breeders. Um, some registrars are willing to meet you and willing to do it outside of shows, which is a little less stressful for everyone involved. And that way you don't have to take extra rabbits with you to shows. Um, I've met people for registration several times before. Um, there's some different ways to go about that as well. Um, when somebody comes and wants to register rabbits, like how, how many does the typical person kind of do like at a time or? Um, I've, I've done anywhere from one to there was someone I would meet pretty regularly because they don't live too far from me. We did 12 one day. So there's no minimum. There's no maximum. It's just how many ever many you want to do that day. Um, keeping in mind the $6 registration fee usually helps moderate it a little bit because it adds up after you do a few rabbits. Um, most people have pretty modest herds, so it, I typically haven't done more than probably 12 at one time from one person. Um, but I've done several people. There's been shows I've done at least 30 registrations. Do you, no, that's, that's, a lot, that's a lot of writing. Um, do you, um, are you as the registrar, like if somebody want, if somebody had enough likes for that rabbit to become a grand champion, as the registrar, would you be willing to take those legs um, and, and turn it in at the same time as the, 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 regist or the registration? It can be done. Um, I've done it a few times. Generally, a check needs to be written to ARBA for the $4 to be a grand champion. Um, it all gets mailed to the same place. So if they write the check and send it with it, um, I have done that before. I also point out that on the top of the registration, you get the pink copy back. On the top, right corner there is the registration number that's all you need to send in the grand champion you just need that number and for the registration to be processed through arba but once that happens they can send in the legs the same day the registration just needs processed um, before they can do the grand champion themselves but that's also by registrar some registrars are more like uh, that's another thing i have to deal with and another check i need to not lose so i'd prefer not to do do you um th that brings up a good point. So after somebody comes to a show and, and and registers their rabbit, how long do you have to be able to submit that form? And then how long is the process to have it come and get back to the person? So I have to submit it within fourteen days of the show. Um, usually, uh, if the show's on a weekend, I try to submit it by Wednesday, just in case there's postal delays. Um, so, and then I've had people have them back the next week. So it kind of depends on uh, how quickly it moves at the ARBA office once I do my part and send it in. Um, I'll double check everything before I send it in to hopefully catch any errors. Um, and then the ARBA office, once they receive it, they'll send it back. Um, so it is pretty unusual for it to take longer than two weeks as long as the registrar submits uh, their the registration blanks in a decent amount of time. Along those same lines, when you re when you are registering a rabbit, um, what happens in terms of tattooing them? Like, does the rabbit get an additional tattoo? What does that look yes. like? Yes. Um, according to ARBA, we are required to tattoo them in the right ear. Uh, you can do this a few different ways. You can either use a pen and write the registration number in their ear. I have a clamp that has a circle around an R. That's just way easier. I give it a slight squeeze. It punctures the hole. I put the ink in the ear and then they're good to go. Um, I try to be very, very cautious because especially when registering at shows, usually the ones that are getting registered are also on the show string. So you want to be very careful not to get ink all over the rabbit because that rabbit probably needs to show again that day. And the owner is very appreciative when their rabbit is not covered in black ink, especially if it is not black. Um, but I have, I raise Angoras, I have friends with Angoras, so um, that also heightens the need to be careful with ink, because ink and wool is just not a good time for anyone. <laughs> I can believe that. Um, uh, so just two more questions here that I can think of right now. Um, so if, or uh, Somebody, so switch, changing gears back to, to somebody, focusing on somebody that's like a, working to, to become a registrar. Um, they, they go through the process. Um, what, 
Like, what would you say to somebody while they're going through, uh, while working through it with a judge? Like, what would you say is like a, some best practices for them to, to have success? Um, so always remember to be respectful. Uh, you're coming in, um, you're kind of the intern. Um, the judge may or may not know you. So keep in mind to be respectful both to the judge and the exhibitors. Um, we all have examples of judges that we didn't exactly like how they did something. So keep that in mind. And also when you're handling the animals, handle them as if they are not your own. Um, this is something I heard recently too. And it's like, what do you mean? I handle my rabbits with great care, which may be true, but keep in mind, these are other people's animals. Um, and think of your own favorite animal. Like we all have our favorite, whether we admit it or not. And when we see them handled poorly, it makes us really upset and very angry. So keep that in mind when you're handling every animal. Be patient, be kind to them, um, and be gentle. It's very easy to get kind of rough and trying to do things quickly, but handling them gently and with care um, goes a long way. Uh, when you're doing your registrar's license, it's more about can you catch are you finding the DQs? Um, can you spot the ones that deviate from the standard more than not? Um, in addition to handling, honestly, I would be most worried about your handling, um, just being gentle and respectful that these are other people's animals that they have worked very hard for, um, some people for even decades. Along the same lines, I mean, you're, and you're, you're saying like, you know, understand how to pose each one of the different breeds or if it's a running breed, obviously let it move on the table. Um, and, and then like, I, I mean, and, and don't do scruffing. I mean, I, and, and, and handle them gently, flip them over gently. Don't just drag them across the table. What would you say would be some good advice to somebody that has recently gotten their registrar's license? Like what would be something that, that you would recommend they do? Um, so I would take it moderate. Um, it's very tempting when you get for, first get your registrar's license to do a whole bunch. Um, I found when I first got my license, one of the first times I did a whole bunch, and then I found um, a whole bunch of errors once I sent them to ARBA. It's really, really easy to miss things on the blank, and it can be really, really tedious to go through it all. So the first few times I try to do probably fewer than 10, ton animals, get used to writing out the blanks, get used to filling everything in, and then having a second pair of eyes to double check. Even after having my license for three years now, um, I still have people double check my blanks in case I miss something because it can be super easy to do. Um, keep in mind, you have to write out every variety. Um, so a black tort, wouldn't it be black tort, it would be black tortoise or black tortoise shell, depending on the breed. Um, some of that you may need to look up. Um, but just a lot of being a registrar, unfortunately, is the paperwork. You get to examine the rabbits and learn from the breeders, um, but then you have the paperwork, which is the not so fun side and the more tedious side. So take your time with that and give yourself grace. Um, if something gets missed, because more than likely something will be missed along the lines. Um, it doesn't make you a bad registrar. It just means you have a little bit more learning and growing to do. Um, usually most people will say, oh, yes, this is a copy of the pedigree for you to take. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Um, I've had people email me pedigrees too, um, but having a printer would definitely be useful if you have the opportunity to take a printer with you and can have that set up, definitely useful. Some people are a little bit iffy about giving me a copy of their pedigree. And then I explain on one side of the registration, it has the full pedigree there. Um, and then on the other side is the nice certificate. Um, but definitely, and then if you have any errors, um, Arba asked you to change, to re-examine the rabbit, um, change it on your either the pink copy, which is the copy the exhibitor keeps, or the yellow copy, which is the copy the registrar keeps, um, and initial it and scan it and send it back in. Having a scanner is super, super useful for that. Um, sometimes you can get away with your phone, but the quality isn't nearly as good. Um, you can get some printers for like only $50. So if you think that registering is something you want to do for a long time um and doing pretty high numbers that would definitely be a good investment um what does what does it mean if rabbit is is uh like red certified um so the the registration has different merits so your regular rabbit if no one in the generational 
is registered, it's just a registered rabbit. If you see red, that means both parents were registered. Um, red and white is both parents and all four grandparents. Um, red, white, and blue, every rabbit on the entire pedigree is registered. And then a gold registration means that every rabbit on the pedigree was a grand champion. Um, I know a mini Rex breeder not too far from me who would have me register all the time because his goal was to have completely gold pedigrees, which is something that's really cool to aim for. I'm just going to ask this. Can you register your own rabbit? You can register your own rabbits. Um, there's no nothing about that for a while. I was like, no, I'm not going to register my own rabbits. But sometimes it's so hard to find registrars at shows. And especially with the Angoras, in order to be eligible for registration, they can't have any breed DQs. And less than two inches of wool is a breed DQ. So sometimes those coats need to come off. Um, so if I'm doing a batch of registrations, I will register one of my own. I go through the same process, check for DQs, of course. Um, although you would hope your and also be um, a time to learn about them. Uh, it goes through the same process, um, but you can certainly register. Um, 